So it's a perfect weekend for a family, family day at the cabin and a trip up Blacktail Butte. The shoe of choice today, the Innovate Terra Ultra 270. Wow, it's windy out here. Every August, we get kind of a two, three day window of blustery, stormy weather, wet weather that we're not used to that ushers in fall. So we've had rain the last four days. It was ba basically pretty nonstop. So it's nice to finally get back out on some trails and have an awesome weekend with the family at the cabin. I'm out on Blacktail Butte, just two miles west of Kelly, Wyoming, where our cabin is, and getting out for pretty good, pretty good run. I'm gonna head over there, and we should, once I get over to the west side, get a nice view of the Tetons, a unique view that you're not used to seeing, plus. We've got a fresh coat of snow. I already have seen two piles of scat, bear scat, and we're headed over to this ridge to get that view of the Tetons. It's also two days before UTMB TDS starts over in Chamonix, France. Have two athletes there doing, uh, doing TDS. And we're a day after the Leadville 100. I just wanna throw a shout out to Tony Krupichka who came in third. If you know Tony, following his story, he's gone years and years and years of injury, not being able to run very much. Started biking more, started climbing more. But this is his first Leadville and I think 10 or 11 years and came in third so pretty exciting for him and hopefully he's kind of back and can start hitting the hitting the trail circuit a little bit more perseverance folks sometimes it takes longer than you think to get where you want to be All right, we're gonna be coming up to the clearing with the Teton view. Hopefully it's not shrouded in clouds. So there's a good shot of the first fall snow, 2021. Really cool light in here. And I'm gonna find a place to sit, get out of the wind. Man, trails are perfect after all that rain. Like I mentioned, we're up here at the family cabin, just north of Jackson Hole. Good, good way to get out of the city and spend a day with the family. Back in 1975, the cabin was built. And the story goes, a couple years before that, my wife's grandfather went to Kelly, bought four lots, all connected. I think each lot was $1,000. Went home to tell Grandma Jean. Grandma Jean was livid. You spent $4,000 on four lots? How dare you? So he went and sold two lots and kept two. One now has the cabin on it, built in 1975. The funny thing about that story is, if you go research Jackson Hole real estate now, Grandma Jean should be the one angry at herself for selling two lots. I hear 
Here's some wildlife. When it's this wet and you hear snapping twigs and you're in grizzly country, you pay attention. Come all right. All right. Last week I had my Cool Impossible camp. Year 10. Had great group of eight from all over the country. First year, one of the first years I didn't have any international runners for obviously COVID reasons, but um, it was a great camp and did a lot of work. And I've done for the last 12 years now I've done camps, clinics, traveled the world speaking on running and got the sun in my eyes. And through all this, all the camps and clinics and training runners, I'm starting to see that there's one diagnostic drill that we can do that really mirrors what our body is doing, good or bad, while we run. And that is simply skipping. Now, I do kind of three drills with my athletes and at camps. Skipping, just general quick skipping, where you're just skipping naturally, just like a kid. Nice and quick feet. And second drill is skipping for height, where you're taking many steps, but trying to get as high as possible. And then the third is skipping for distance, where you're taking less steps, but trying to get as much distance as possible. And there Here I met one of my camps in India. And you can see him having these runners skip for height. Stay patient, you can height, just see the, the difference Good. in how each runner is executing this drill. Some are really relaxed and getting real high. Some awesome, are rigid, nice. no, can't nice get very relaxed. high. Good. Some have trouble sequencing yeah, their arms nice with relaxed. their legs. It just really is a great diagnostic to know what they need to work on. Awesome, awesome. I use these for a variety of reasons, but through the years of doing this, I've started to see that the athletes and the runners who have difficulty skipping, whether it's sequencing their arms with their legs or just getting the movement down in general, they in turn have trouble with run form and need to maybe make run form transformation uh, the, the kind of the most extreme um, changes. And so this is a great diagnostic tool for you to do. Go film yourself skipping, doing quick skip, skipping for height, skipping for distance. Film yourself. See how your arms are sequen with, sequencing with your legs. That's some of the hardest thing to teach is the upper body sequencing with the lower legs for good run form. Our body is meant to work as a unit. Sequencing our rotation of our upper body with the movement are of our legs. So skipping is a great diagnostic tool to see where you're at with your run form, okay? Everything I do with my drills, they're not only a diagnostic to where you need to improve, but it's also the corrective action. So just simply try that out, use that as a warm up, but film yourself and, and match it with, um, you know, six, eight, eight weeks later of, of practicing this and see how well it helps you to relax while you're running, sequencing your arms, and also helping your force production. But again, I think what I've found in through all my years, a lot of times people who are having trouble skipping, it's more that they're having trouble sequencing their torso and their arm rotation with their legs, which helps them become more efficient. And this is the key and where we're kind of specifically using the skipping to help with this. So try that out and I'm headed down the hill and I'll see you guys next time.